Hey, this is Professor Perez again. Today what we're going to do is an introduction to multiplication. Now don't get scared. Now before we get started, we got to bring out our student of the semester, and that's Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey Charlie, you ready to go? Huh? Yeah, uh, you better be. All right, anyway, let's go right here. Now notice, write this down Charlie. There are different ways of indicating multiplication. Sometimes people use a dot, okay, like that. That means two times three. Some people, in most cases, use this little x, which means multiplication. Again, two times three. Sometimes you'll see a number outside of a parenthesis. Notice there's no operation indicated between the two and the parentheses that contain the three. There's no addition, subtraction, or anything like that. If there's no operation, it means it's multiplication. And sometimes people will put uh, numbers individually in parentheses with no operation between, and that also indicates multiplication. Anyway, all these expressions mean multiply two times three. Now write this down, Charlie. Write it down twice. All right. Well, what does multiplication actually mean? Well, in this introductory level, we're going to present multiplication as addition. Watch. If we have 2 times 3, Charlie, what does it mean? 2, two. times 3, here we go. I'm going to help you out on this. 2 times 3 means that we have 2 plus 2 plus 2. So notice there's three 2's being added together. That's right. Now what is 2 plus 2 plus 2, Charlie? 6. That's 6. That's right. Okay. Let's look at 3 times 2. Well, 3 times 2 means what, Charlie? 3 plus 3. And 3 plus 3. Very nice. And what's 3 plus 3? 6. That is 6. Okay, now first of all, notice that 2 times 3 is 3 times 2. Now, that gives us a property for multiplication. Do you remember, Charlie, when we did addition, properties of addition, we found out that A plus B was the same as what, Charlie? B plus A. B plus A. That's right. And so for multiplication, we will, we've just shown that a times B is the same as what, Charlie? B times A. The B times A. There you go. And so that is the commutative property for multiplication. We'll be using that quite often throughout the semester. So here we go, Charlie. Now, let's look at 4 times 3. Again, we're going to look at it from the addition standpoint, meaning this. If we want to do 4 times 3, Charlie, pay attention here. Well, let's look at this number line. If we have one four, well, four times one is actually four. And four times two is actually eight. That's true, four times two is eight. And now for four times three, Charlie, watch this. Notice we have three fours, and if we add them together, we get 12. That means that four times three is what, Charlie? 12, 12, very nice there, Charlie. Now watch this. If you wanna figure out four times four is now, you know, if somebody, Charlie, comes up and asks you, hey, mister, what's four times four? That happens all the time, by the way. Four times four, then you can think of it this way. Well, if four times three is 12, then four times four must be 16. All you had to do was add another four to that one, right? Now watch this. Four times four is 16. If we want four times five, four times five, we add another four and we get 20. So notice here, we have 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 20. There are five of these 4's being added together. And so we're looking at 4 times 5, meaning 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. There you go. It's 20. Now, notice there's a pattern here, Charlie. We have 12, 16, and 20. What's going on here? Adding That's four. right. We're adding 4's, okay? So watch this. 4 times 6. Charlie, how do you figure out 4 times 6? Add another 4. Add another 4, and that's 24. There you go. If we want 4 times 7, what do we do, Charlie? Add 4. Add another 4, and that's 28. Very nice. Now bring us home with 4 times 8, Charlie. What do we do? Add 4. Add another 4, and what is it? 32. 32. Very nice there, Charlie. So notice a pattern here. Everything is being increased by 4. Now, if 4 times 8 is 32, by the commutative property, Charlie, what's 8 times 4? 32. 32, that's right. What's 7 times 4? 28. 
28, very nice. What's 6 times 4? That would be 24. 24. What's 5 times 4? 20. That's 20. That's the commutative property for multiplication. Okay. Now, let's move on now. Now, we left off at 4 times 8. Now, Charlie, what does 4 times 8 actually mean? 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus That's 4 plus right. 4 plus 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 4 8 of them being added together, right? Okay. And that is what? 32. 32. Now, some people remember, oh, 4 times 8 is 32. Well, if 4 times 8 is 32, Charlie, what do we do for 4 times 9? What do we need to do? Add 4. Just add another 4. That's right. And so what's 4 times 9, Charlie? 36. 36, because 32 plus 4 is 36. You just add another 4. Now, watch this. 4 times 10, Charlie, what do we need to do? Put another 4. Add another 4, and obviously 36 and 4 is what? 40. It's 40. Now, see... Most people remember that 4 times 10 is 40, because all you have to do is add a 0 to the 4, right? And 4 times 10 is 40, right? Well, notice here, if 4 times 10 is 40, 4 times 9 is 36, right? You take away a 4 from the 40. This is why addition and subtraction is so important to learning your multiplication tables. I said learning your multiplication tables, not memorizing them, right? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to learn our multiplication tables. Some of them we memorize, but we're trying to learn them. Okay, and similarly, 4 times 8, if we take away a 4 from the 36, we end up with 32. Now, let's do 4 times 11. Yes, and I know people have all these fancy tricks for doing uh, multiplying numbers by 11, you know, the somersault, backflip method, and all these other things, but we're doing it from the addition standpoint here. Watch. If 4 times 10 is 40, Charlie, 4 times 11, all we need to do is do what? Add another 4. Add another 4, and it's 44. There you go. Now, 4 times 12, what do we do? Add another 4. Add another 4, and we get what? 48. 48. Now, see, a lot of people, if you're asked, what's 4 times 12? See, a person with good math kung fu techniques thinks 4 times 10 is 40, and so 4 times 11 is 44, 4 times 12 is 48, and if they're asked what's 4 times 13, they just realize, I just add another 4, and I'll get 52. There you go. That's 4 times 13. There you go. So notice here, really what we're doing is we're adding and subtracting 4s. That's how we'll move around this. 4 times 8 is 32. 4 times 9 is 36. 4 times 10 is 40. 4 times 11 is 44. 4 times 12 is 48. 4 times 13 is 52. And if we wanted 4 times 15, 14, I'm sorry, 4 times 14, what would 4 times 14 be, Charlie? 56. That would be 56. You just add another 4. So there you go. So let's move on here. Now, most of us will not have a problem with 7 times 10, because we kind of know how to cheat with that one, right? 7 times 10 is what, Charlie? 70. It's 70, right? Remember, people just put the 0. But remember, 7 times 10 means you have 10 sevens being added together. 7 plus 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 7. 10 of them, I think. That's 70, right? Now, see, a person with good kung fu now, if they're asked, what's 7 times 9? They'll think, hey, 7 times 10 is 70, so to find 7 times 9, I've got to take away a 7, right? Because there's only 9 of them being added together this time. And so they think 70 subtract 7 is what, Charlie? 63. 63. That is 7 times 9. Remember, 7 times 9 is the same as 9 times 7. That is 63. But see what they did here. A person with good kung fu says 7 times 10 is 70, and 7 times 9, they turn it into a subtraction problem and subtract 7, and that's how they get 63. Now, suppose they were asked 7 times 8, Charlie. Well, if 7 times 10 is 70, if you want 7 times 8, you've got to take away 2 7s or subtract 2 7s, and that's why they think 70 subtract 14. And this is why you've got to have good subtraction techniques. Charlie, what's 70 subtract 14? 56? Very nice, Charlie. That is 56. So 7 times 8 is 56. Now, see, we can verify our answer by remembering, hey, if we want to figure out what 7 times 8 is, we think 7 times 10 is 70, and we take away two 7s, that gives us the 56. So, so try 